Join us as we venture from the heart of Borneo's mountains to the sea, exploring water as it connects life from small streams and rivers to adjacent floodplains, mangroves, estuaries, and finally to the Coral Triangle's reefs. Take a second to pause and look at the early morning fog. This is water leaving the lush tropical rainforest trees and forming clouds known as evapotranspiration. The abundance of water that falls in the tropics supports an exceptionally high biodiversity of life. It is the most essential element sustaining plants, wildlife and humans. Water plays a central role in moderating temperature and controlling the climate. Without water, life cannot go on. Now, let's journey together through the Kinabatangan River catchment, following water as it cycles through the aquatic ecosystems of Borneo. Can you imagine how large this catchment is? 23 times the size of Singapore. We will pass through treetops and down headwater streams to larger rivers, coastal mangroves, around an estuary and eventually arrive at coral reefs nestled in the vast blue ocean. Hang on and buckle up as we explore impacts and threats to our remarkable aquatic, riparian and coastal ecosystems, before finally discovering how these vital ecosystems are being restored and protected by adjacent communities. The source of all aquatic ecosystems begins in the headwaters, where we will start our journey, high in the mountains in the heart of Borneo. Listen to the sights and sounds all around you. Now focus on the crystal clear water of these small streams, flowing through the untouched mountainous landscapes of the upper catchment. The riparian vegetation on the banks of these streams filters nutrients and traps organic matter, preventing it from flowing into these streams. Waterfalls and rapids are essential physical features of streams. As water flows over rocks and down the steep gradients that we call waterfalls, oxygen is infused into the stream High oxygen levels in the natural streams here support an enormous diversity of fish, aquatic invertebrates and all the terrestrial wildlife that are part of the food web in the montane forests. From the cool, clear water flowing in mountain streams, a network of smaller tributary streams flow through the rainforest before converging to create the mighty Kinabatangan River. This larger, wider river winds through lowland dipterocarp rainforests, driven by the physical and dynamic river processes of erosion and deposition. A diversity of habitats are created within the water and adjacent wetlands, providing niches for a plethora of species. Here, we can find wild orangutans swinging through the trees multiple species of hornbills with their distinctive beaks and proboscis monkeys with their even more distinctive noses. And here along the riverbank is the river's largest resident, the Bornean pygmy elephant. Munching on the aptly named elephant grass, this herd is over 40 strong. That's a lot of mouths to feed. The herd travels up and down the river on the endless search for food provided by their riverside habitat. Travelling downstream, we now find ourselves amongst the expansive mangrove forests where fresh water meets the sea. Here, the resulting brackish water gives rise to a variety of stilt, 
pencil and buttress roots that are adapted to the inundated, salty conditions. Mangroves form an important nursery for fish and crustaceans and support a huge variety of birds, mollusks, crabs and even mangrove snakes. Look out to the horizon. You can see that these mangroves extend all the way to the ocean. Their location provides coastal protection by creating a buffer with the land, another crucial ecosystem service, which reduces flooding and erosion. They also regulate climate as well as providing a wildlife habitat to so many species, including this white-bellied sea eagle. Communities located next to the mangrove forests also rely on fish and giant prawns they catch for their main source of protein. Let's dive into the sea now, moving from the brackish water of the estuaries to the open ocean. We are now diving in the middle of the Southeast Asian Coral Triangle. The Coral Triangle has the highest diversity of corals, tropical fish, crustaceans, mollusks, sea turtles and large apex predators in the world. The coral reef forms the bedrock for the reef ecosystem, providing food and shelter to an incredible level of biodiversity. In pristine locations, the world is awash with colour and life as thousands of fish and other species live out their lives. But all is not as it seems in these vital aquatic ecosystems. Today, there is an important story to tell. A story of degradation and demise. A story we have the opportunity to rewrite and reverse. Since the 1960s, chainsaws and large-scale machinery such as bulldozers have led to the exponential deforestation of hardwood trees in the tropical lowland rainforests for building materials and the export of luxury timber to other regions of the world. Large tracts of lowland forests along the lower Kinabatangan River were deforested and then converted into this, a palm oil plantation. Take a look around. Can you imagine what this landscape looked like just 50 years ago? Where we are right now was a pristine lowland tropical rainforest with hundreds of species of trees per hectare. Now, this is a monoculture of oil palm trees. Nearly 17% of old growth tropical rainforest have been converted to palm oil within the Kinabatangan River catchment and many other low-lying areas around Sabah. Large-scale logging of these forests has now been replaced by these unnatural oil palm mega plantations. Whilst they are trees, the lack of diversity leaves the forest ecosystem far from healthy. It can take hundreds of years to fully recover. Let us take a closer look at the water in the Kinabatangan River. What do you notice? Do you see the river's water colour resembles chocolate milk? Is this natural? Unfortunately, this milky brown colour is the result of large amounts of eroded soil and excess fertiliser entering the river from the surrounding clear-cut forests and palm oil plantations. The high turbidity of flood waters then mixes all of this and results in this murky colour, degrading water quality and potentially causing eutrophication along the Kinabatangan River. Mangrove trees have also been felled for timber and replaced by aquaculture and coastal development. Look around at the clear-cut mangrove forest adjacent to the sea. Once the mangrove ecosystem is lost, so too is the wildlife they provided a habitat for. 
they also lose their ability to provide their ecosystem services, including coastal protection. Communities living amongst the mangroves have used the mangroves they live adjacent to. They harvest the trees for charcoal and building materials, fish in the small channels and estuary, harvest the young ferns for vegetables, and use the palm fronds for weaving baskets. As populations increase in these areas and palm oil plantations encroach, mangrove forests have disappeared. Out into the oceans, impacts are vast. Fish bombing has led to the complete destruction of coral reef ecosystems in just seconds. Unsustainable fishing practices, shark finning and over-harvesting has decimated fish and shark populations. Coral bleaching has occurred due to increased ocean temperatures resulting from anthropogenic climate change. Without the coral reef forming the basis of the reef ecosystem, the system collapses. The fish disappear, and with them, the larger apex predators. But all is not lost. There is hope. At places like the Tropical Research and Conservation Centre in Pom Pom Island, off the coast of northeast Sabah, a team of biologists started coral reef restoration through the use of bottle reefs, biscuits, reef turtles and step reefs. This facilitated coral reef colonisation and development, leading to this phenomenal recovery of the coral reefs. Can you still see the bottles that were the foundation of this reef? The process was so successful that they are almost covered. The fish came back and the reefs also provide a comfy spot for turtles to take a time out. Moving to the riparian ecosystems, restoration along the Kinabatangan River was started in 1998 by a co-op of four villages called Coppel. Hundreds of thousands of trees have been planted along the floodplains of this river, connecting habitat for threatened and endangered wildlife like the orangutan and Bornean pygmy elephants. Next up, mangrove restoration and protection, which has also ramped up in recent years. Here in Lombok, Indonesia, a landscape scale mangrove and coral reef restoration project is rapidly expanding reconnecting and diversifying highly fragmented and degraded habitats. Led by the Sustainable Oceanic Research, Conservation and Education NGO and backed by the Sasek community, the team is working to plant thousands of mangrove trees. Together, they are restoring decades of damage to these delicate ecosystems upon which they aim to build sustainable livelihoods for their community. Now, let us take a moment to enjoy this picturesque view of the aquatic ecosystems of Borneo and reflect upon their beauty, high biodiversity and connectivity. Natural conditions and ecosystem services have been impacted by logging and oil palm plantations throughout the catchment. We explored the interconnectedness of aquatic, riparian and coastal ecosystems and how degradation of one will have significant impacts on the others. We must consider aquatic ecosystems as one whole, connected, dynamic system, from roots to reefs, when protecting and restoring them. Ecosystem restoration gives us hope. Let's do our part to restore these systems together. In this UN decade of ecosystem restoration, we must dream big and tackle our restoration challenges. Join the team Generation Restoration Movement and be part of the conservation solution.